The Mega Man franchise has a mass collection of games that get close to my heart. From when I played Mega Man 3 back when I was a kid to now, I played a good chunk of the games, but throughout the set franchise is just a series of games closest to me, though it's possibly not as popular compared to its older brothers. The Mega Man Battle series, unlike the previous games in the Mega Man franchise, was an RPG-like set of games take place in an alternate timeline, where network and AI were in favor instead of robotics. But people in this world had their own personal terminal, or PDTs for short. Similar to the cell phones we have, they can send messages and access the internet via ports that one could jack into. But the one thing that stands out is that there's an AI within each individual PDT, known as a Network Navigator, or NetNavi for short. The purpose of a NetNavi is to assist the owner of the PDT, known as an operator. While the series, despite its best efforts, was not as big here in the US, the popularity series was massive in Japan, spawning a five-season anime, 13-volume manga, toys, a theatrical movie, and a Settlers of Catan edition? What? Oddly enough, the idea of Bound Network started off as a horror game. It started with, what should we make for the GBA? It had us making a game that links to your heartbeat with a wearable device. The theme was having fun while your heart pounds horror game. But due to the popularity of card games at the time, the staff decided to go down that route to follow the trend. We spoke about this earlier. At the time, card games were popular so it started with the card game only Capcom could make as a theme. In addition, this project's goal was that from the start, it was decided that Rockman's IP would be used. The system was a mix between Rockman's action and a card game. This became data action. In short, the cards were replaced by data as battle chips, and using those to fight was the Rockman character. Adding to the fact that the worldview, quite appropriately, a network society. And just like that, those became the setting and system for the very start. I think it's now time to dive in and check out the Battle Network series with six mainline games on the GBA. I won't be covering Network Transmission, Battleship Challenge, and 4.5 of the Real Operation. The first game released in Spring 2001 in Japan, and Fall 2001 in the US and Europe. To sum up the story you'll be playing, it's about a young boy named Lenny Kari, an elementary school student who takes net battle and over studying. His net navy, Mega Man.exe, a program who keeps in the check and has hidden potential, and their adventures revolve around saving the internet from the cyber terrorist World 3, or WWW. This series was made to change in the standard Mega Man formula. Instead of the iconic jumping and shooting like in the classic X games, this series took a more RPG route of gameplay, but you still see some familiar faces as some of the robot masters from the classic series, such as Gutsman, Roll, and Proto Man make an appearance. There are two worlds in which you can explore, the real world, where land resides, and the cyber world where Mega Man can run. Each has their own unique layout where you can venture. As land, you can run through the real world to find places that Mega Man can enter and or, while it's Mega Man, you can run around the cyber network, search for items, and fight enemies. Fights take place in 3x6 grid based arenas, with the enemy on one side and the navy on the other. Enemies come in a variety of consistent your standard basic enemies or other net navvies, both of which having their own methods of attacking. Your ways of attacking can either be the standard Mega Buster or using battle chips. Battle chips are storage devices that you can insert to your PET to let your navvy do a slew of functions in the battle. Each battle chip has a letter attributed to them, called a code. Matching the same letter of code can let you choose a variety of battle chips. Some battle chips and enemies have an elemental fitting attached to them as well. There are four elements. Fire, Aqua, Elec, and Wood. Each have their own strengths, weaknesses, and attributes. Fire tends to do massive damage and beats Wood, but loses to Aqua, obviously. Aqua attacks multiple enemies and beats Fire, but loses to Elec. Duh. Elec attacks... Try saying that fast five times. Elec attacks, paralyzes, and beats Aqua, but loses to Wood. Neat. Wood attacks for the most part cause the enemies to not flinch, giving you a chance to strike again and beats Elec, but loses to Fire. No duh. <laughs> you can also use identical battle chips if they don't have the same letter code. When you pair up certain battle chips in a specific order, you can unleash a powerful attack known as the Program Advance, which can either be an enhanced version of the selected battle chips or a different attack entirely. You keep battle chips in folder, which you can hold up to 30 at a time. There is also a limit to how many of the same chips you can have in set folder. After battles, you gain currency in the form of Zenny, which you can use to buy more chips, upgrade your buster or health. Around the cyber world, there are items from called Mystery Data, which differ from what the contest might be, ranging from Zenny to Battle Chips to even upgrades from Mega Man. There are also items called Sub Chips you can purchase throughout the cyber world. These items can heal you, prevent enemy counters, and unlock Mystery Data. Though the first of the series, it was one of the last games I finished. Mega Man Battle Hour 2, released in December 2001 in Japan, and 2002 everywhere else, was a massive upgrade compared to the first. The story revolves around Man and his friends going on summer break after the fall of World 3, and with a new threat in the name of Gospel, a net mafia whose plans are to clone the ultimate net navy based on DXC. This century seemed to have a darker tone in regards to the music and the unnecessary swearing. Okay, you're sipping. You ready to rumble? Hells yeah! <laughs> And as such with the new game, there are new enemies to fight, new battle chips, new program advances, and new navs to encounter, including Cutman, Airman, heck yeah, Shadow Man, and more. In fact, like how Capcom did for previous Mega Man games, they made a boss character contest, which people could send their own designs to have a chance to see in the game. The first design became Gate Man, an optional fight that made it in the game. But the most notable addition to the series was that the left trigger could now give you an option to escape a random battle with the chance to flee 
Or if you messed up, start the round with no battle tips at all. But more importantly is the introduction to style changes. A styles were the abilities that changed Mega Man in a variety of ways. There are five styles in total with four elements that they can be attributed to. And though the elemental affinity is random, each style has a specific method to obtaining. Gut style is obtained by using the buster more than anything. Shown with a large fist, he gains double the buster power. Though rapid fire is reduced to one, but you get super armor. Custom style is obtained by using standard battle chips and program fences, and gives Mega Man a bigger backpack and additional two battle chips from the start. Shield style is obtained by using recovery and defense chips. In battle, Mega Man starts with a barrier, and with the shield, he can block pretty much anything, halving the damage. Team style is obtained by using Navi chips more in battle. Rocking a new helmet, Mega Man can have more Navi chips in the folder. The last style is an exclusive style, known as Hub Style, appearing only in this game and a lighter color than the standard attire. You get all the bells and whistles with Hub Style, the only drawback being that your health is cut in half. In my opinion, this entry was more difficult than the franchise with some difficult bosses at the beginning, and I have yet to beat this game as well due to my competence as a net battler. Seriously, how the crap am I supposed to find a rat on 2B? The third in the series, Mega Man Battle Network 3, originally released in winter 2002 in Japan, is probably the most popular in the series, and started a trend that we'll see onward, which is that this is the first game in the series to have two versions. In Japan, an enhanced black version released in Spring 2003, when localized, white and blue were based on the differences between the original game and black, but had the various bug fixes from black and was released in summer 2003. I don't know why blue was the color they chose, because there was a black version in Japan, but... Whatever, with new Navi showing up like Flash Man, Bowman, Man, and Metal Man, and three boss missions King Man, Mist Man in White, and Bowman Man in Blue? Okay. This game takes place not far from Battle Network 2. Battle Network 3 shows us the return of World 3 as the main antagonist, and the tournament to find out who's the strongest net battler, known as the N1 Grand Prix. Tournament arcs are the best ones, huh? Many changes in this game has now become the standard for the series. Battle chips were now separated into three categories Standard, Mega, and Giga chips. While standard chips work essentially the same as the previous games, Mega chips house all the Navi and other strong chips, while Giga chips were much more powerful, tide changing chips. But you can only have a limited amount of both said chips. With Mega chips, you can only have five of them, while Giga chips, you can only have one. The next change, which is probably the most important, is the Navi customizer. And as the name suggests, it suits Mega Man to be equipped with how the player wants. Throughout your playthrough, you'll get programs that'll help you traverse the net. But more importantly, you can use Navi customizer to increase your health, lesser power, speed, and charge time, removing the permanent power up aesthetic from the previous two games but you still have to buy those HP memory items. Unfortunately, with the new Navi customized in the game, you can now only have one style, and the whole style change mechanic just got some nerfs and buffs, with the fact that you can only get the specific abilities of a style on programs now, depending on how long you play as a style in the question. Gut style now has a rapid fire gimmick by rapidly pushing the B button. You also get the break charge and break bust programs that can make your buster and your charge shots damage guarding enemies, with the nerf being that you need to get super hard program if you want to avoid flinching. With the custom style, you can get a death battle chip after getting a fight if you get an S rank without using your buster or Navi chip, and it also starts with one extra chip so too, it should increase with the custom run programs, with that one being compatible with multiple styles and Mega Man by himself. And you can have more with the custom 2 program. Shield style loses the block ability now that it's program, but you get a better shield program which nullifies non-breaking attacks, and the reflect program which will flex, which could damage navies in the same row. Team style, if you get an S rank in a navy. In team style, if you get an S rank while in a navy battle, you get a more powerful navy chip. Though it can only have 6 navy chips without any programs like custom style, you get 2 programs with one that you can use for the other styles respectively. Only this time the programs focus on mega chips, with the mega folder plus 1 and mega folder plus 2 respectively. Like the previous game, there are 3 secret styles. Well, one that is shared with inversions, and one exclusive to each. In blue, you get the shadow style, which is given to you after you use invisible chips over the other ones. The charge shot doesn't do any damage, but instead turns you invisible. And if you stick with it, you gain the shadow shoes, which lets you move around crack panels without you breaking them. You gain the full shoes, which avoid all hazardous panel effects minus poison. And also you get the anti-damage program, which works like a reflect, but you now throw three shurikens at your enemies. In white version, you get ground style, which is gained after using panel chain chips, and with the set style, your charge shot now breaks whatever panel it hits with and with set style, your charge shot now breaks whatever panel it hits. With the programs you get, change the battlefield to either grass, lava, ice, or holy. Lastly, we have bug style. This style is gained from messing up the Navi customizer, and like the name suggests, it gives you bugs during battle, ranging from decreasing HP to inverted controls. It's honestly a pretty risky uh, kind of style until you get the bug stop program. With how heavy the story can get and what to do in the post game, it's understandable that this one is well loved by fans. Mega Man Banner for Red Sun and Blue Moon, released in 2003 in Japan, and 2004 everywhere else. Yeah, in my opinion, this is one of the weakest games in the series. Like the previous game, uh, games, the story revolves around another tournament with a new criminal organization called Nebula, who wants to destroy the world, I 
guess? The actual story itself is not really important as the others, because it mostly centers around the tourney. Um, the plot is really bare bones in this game. The game brings back some old navvies such as Numberman, Fireman, Thunderman, and Woodman. The game brings back some old navvies such as Numberman, Fireman, Thunderman, and Woodman, and new navvies like Shademan, Searchman, and Aquaman make their first appearance. However, there were many changes that happened to this game games, much like the previous entries. The first change is the new theme that replaced the jingle that was used since the first game, which was an alternate version of running through Cyberworld. Updated art sprites and portraits that differ from previous three games. Wind, Sword, Break, Recovery, Crack, Plus, Invis, and Obstacle are new elements added for battle chips. And of course, the most important is the battle system. When your first battle starts, you notice that the add button is not there anymore, as with the removal of three spaces of the extra battle chip slots. I forgot to bring it up while we were talking about the first three games. If you select a number of chips and push the add button, for one turn you go without any battle chips, and once the custom bar gets full and you open the custom window, you receive the same number of battle chips you given up that turn. But now we have the emotional window, which shows us the condition Mega Man is in during the battle. Full synchro will be the first, well, second I guess. Yes, we count the normal emotion as the first emotion you'll obtain and hopefully the most often state you're in. You obtain full synchro by using a counter hit with non damage chips, giving your next battle chip double damage to showing enemies when you're able to counter so you can still be in that state. Anger is attained by surviving a massive damage dealing attack, which gives you super armor and a battle chip multiplier for a brief moment. Anxious is something that everybody's in. The anxious state happens when you've been playing poorly, either because you've been taking constant hits from the boss or you're just the bad player and why are you playing this game, dude? But when you're in the anxious state, something happens that could also be a potential game changer if you know how to use it. The Dark Chip. The Dark Chips are chips that will merge when you're in the anxious state. In a chip select menu, when you see the Dark Chip, you can literally hear the power that comes from them. However, if you decide to use one, not only will you have a bug factor in battle, but you permanently lose one health point. With the events of the previous game, you lose the ability to style change, but you can now enter a new state called Double Soul. The souls you gain vary from the game you have. Guts, Roll, Fire, Wind, Thunder, and Search Soul for Red Sun, and Metal, Number, Aqua, Junk, Wood and Proto Soul for Blue Moon. How you activate Double Soul is by sacrificing a battle chip with a corresponding element, then BAM! You now have the affinity, abilities, and charge shot of the Navi who you Soul United with. Remember that you have 3 turns to use the Soul United or you'll revert back to normal mechs. Also, when you're anxious, you don't have the ability to access Double Soul. Now, this game also had a brief crossover with the Mega Man Zero series that was coming out around the same time. If you have the Mega Man Zero 3 cartridge, you can link up with your version of Battle Number 4 to get the Sea Saber battle chip. While in Zero 3, enemies from Battle Number 4 will appear in the Cyber World sections of the game. I forgot to add that this game also started with crossovers from another game. Game. Boktai, the sun is in your hand, created by Konami back in 2003. Oddly enough, Solar Boy Django was added to the game because of a hangout with co-designer of Mega Man and Betrayer My Trust, KJ Anifune, and Metal Gear creator Hideo Kojima. When Kojima's son consulted me, I could tell that he really wanted to spread Boktai to children, and above all, I thought we could make something interesting together. So after we spoken a few times, I suggested, why don't we put Django in Mega Man Battle Number 4? And Kojima-san felt that that would be interesting. So we got the go-ahead from our companies, and we decided to do it. I thought of various ideas, and showed them to Kojima-san. And he said okay right away. When I brought the plans to him, the members of our development team said. When I brought the plans to them, the members of our development team said, he's probably gonna say no, isn't he? But when he said okay to everything, it became, what do you mean all this was actually okay? Thinking about it normally, just having another company's character appear in the game is surprising, isn't it? But despite that, Django appears quite a lot. I had people bowing their heads and saying, is he really going to appear this much? With the implementations Battle Network did for Boktai, like an area in the game, Battle chips, and even a side quest, I'd say that it was well represented and I got the game myself. Battle Network was fun for me in some points, but but the game was rough for the fact that you had to play the game three times to get all souls and fight stronger enemies every playthrough, really making me not want to go back. Oddly enough, Mega Man Battle Network 4 is the best selling Mega Man Battle Network game, and it's the second best selling in the franchise, with Mega Man 2 being at number one. Who knew? Mega Man Battle Network 5, Team Colonel and Team Pokemon are my favorite games in the series. Team Pokemon released back in December 2004, and Team Colonel releasing in February 2005 in Japan, with both releasing in December 2005 for the US and Europe. The story takes place around a month after the previous game. An attack on the lab Lance's father works at occurs by Return to Nebula, kidnapping Dr. Ikari and the Davis Lance friends had, causing either Chad, the operator Quarterman, or Beryl, the operator Colonel, create a team to stop the revived Nebula and rescue Navi's and Lance's dad. Nightman, Napalm Man, Toad Man, and Magnum Man are some of the Navi's that may return to the series, and Gyro Man, Medi, and Tomahawk Man, yes, are some of the new Navi's that make the first appearance. Art-wise, these games don't really change much from Red Sun and Blue Moon, and there hasn't been any big change to the battle system other than Chaos Innocent. Chaos Innocent occurs when you sacrifice dark chips, which are now more available, as up to three can be put in a folder, transforming into a dark version of the soul that matches the element and give you one turn to be in that form. When you use Chaos Innocent, 
The charge shot becomes a dark tip used, but it's also out of candle. If you don't time the charge right, a dark version of Mega Man will emerge and fight against you. My personal favorite addition to the game are the liberation missions. It's a somewhat turn-based mechanic where you not only play as Mega Man but other navies depending on the game you're in. In this mode, you have to convert dark panels by fighting viruses in three turn battles. If you win in one turn, you convert a good amount of panels, and if you lose, well, shame on you. Dark panels come in a variety, so you have to think about how to handle them. There are three choices a navi can do while liberating. The standard liberation, where you fight as I mentioned. There are abilities depending on the navi, which can either attack multiple panels, protect the allies, or attack the enemies above panels. And you can also pass. Liberation missions are always at the end of chapters in the game, so unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of missions in the game, but you can always go back to previous missions to see how fast you can beat it. Like with Battle Number 4, this game crosses over with the Boktai series with returning battle chips and a Django Mega Chip. Though now, if you or a friend had Boktai 2 sold by Django, you can connect via link cable and have a battle with Shademan.exe to see who can beat them the fastest. There is also the Nintendo DS part of the games called Mega Man Battle Network 5 Double Team DS that came out back in 2005. It was an enhanced version of the game where you could choose either version of the game you want to play. The additions to the game itself has rearranged music, minor voice dialogue, a new party system where you can have two more navvies with you during non-plot related parts of the game, transport chips where you can switch navvies from the other version of the game, and a new pinch motion which is somewhat like anxious but you need to use the DS mic to get Mega Man out of the state. And because this is on the DS, there is content you get from GBA games as well if you put them in the bottom slot. Depending on what game from the Battle Network titles you put in, the battle music will change to a rearranged version of the game's battle theme and some extras. If you have the base icon in the GBA ports of either Team Chrono or Team Proto Man, you get Race Cross, a powerful form that replaces the base Mega Man. And if you have Boktai 2 Soul Boy Django in the GBA slot, you get Soul Cross, a form that gives Mega Man Django's weapon as a charge shot, and some other benefits. Like I said, this is one of my favorite games in the whole Mega Man franchise, and I'm always excited to go back and play it. I really need to get back into the game again. I miss it. Mega Man Battle Network 6, Side Beast Gregor, and Side Beast Falser, released in autumn 2005 in Japan and summer 2006 everywhere else. It is the last installment of the Mega Man Battle Network series, and the second series in the Mega Man franchise to conclude, the first being the Mega Man Zero series that ended with Mega Man Zero 04 back in 2005. This game has a sense of finality as soon as you hear the title theme, which in my opinion, it is epic but saddening. Sharing the sense of sadness, the story starts off at the elementary school with everyone ready for graduation. It is then when Lan announces to his classmates that he is moving due to his dad's job transferring him. I can relate to this since I was a kid, my family moved quite often. You meet new friends in Cyber City like Iris, Nick, and Tab. But like with every game, there is more to the cars move than expected. Some of the turning navvies are Elect Man, Heat Man, Aqua Man, and Tomahawk Man, while Tingu Man, Slash Man, Erase Man, and Grab Man are some that debut. There's a moderate amount of changes that happen with the battle system this time around. First, there's a tax system for your battle chips. By selecting two chips that don't exceed 60 megabytes, they will always appear together on the custom screen. Next is because of the events of what happened in Battle Network 5. Due to the Dark Chip Factory being destroyed, there are no more Dark Chips in the game. The third is that there is a new element cycle. As like how Fire beats Wood, Wood beats Elec, and Elec beats Aqua, and so on and so forth, now Wind beats Cursor. Cursor beats Break, Break beats Sword, and Sword beats Wind, with the elements in Viz, Recover, and Crack removed, becoming Null Chips again. The fourth is that Soul Unison has been replaced with a cross system, a transformation method that can be activated right from the beginning of the fight and can last till the fight's over, or if Mega Man gets attacked by a move that he's weak against at the time. You have five crosses you can get in each game, Heat, Elect, Slash, and Charge for Gregar, and Aqua, Tomahawk, Tengu, Ground, and Dust for Faltzer. The last addition for the battle system is the Beast Out, an ability where Mega Man gains the power of the side beast. Gregor gains super armor, while Faltzer gives you the freedom to avoid hazard and open panels. When he exhausts the turns, you can hit the beast button again to trigger Beast Over, an all ditch effort that makes Mega Man invincible and gives your select chips double power. But Mega Man will become uncontrollable for the entire turn until the custom gauges are filled, which then the custom screen will automatically open, with Mega Man getting completely exhausted with his health gradually decreasing and his buster firing slowly and dealing one point of damage. One of the biggest removals from the game is the disappearance of any Boktai references. Due to how low the sales were in the West, the third game, Boktai 3, Savata's Counterattack, was never released internationally, causing a good chunk of the endgame area and side quests removed from the game. This is unfortunate because in the end game you can enter an endgame area known as the Graveyard. The Graveyard is an area that gives a more somber sense of finality. In the US version, there are tombstones with names of navvies that were bound on 6. While in Japanese versions, there are tombstones for every navvy from every battle in game release. There is quite a bunch to do in the end game, but it's kind of a shame really that they took a chunk off that, making, in my opinion, the game feel a little bare compared to previous games. But when you see that final screen, it hits you. This is it. The series is over. This was actually the first time I cried for a video game. I played the series when I was junior high with the ending in my junior year high school. There was an empty feeling I had afterwards until... Mega Man Star Force was announced a year later, and there was a glimmer of joy that I felt as a fan of Battle Network. And though there were not the Battle Network, including a side quest that featured Mega Man.exe for a brief moment, if you inserted any Battle Network game into the GBA slot on the DS. Thinking of it now? I kind of wish that they should have held off making Star Force so people could let the ending Battle Network sink in a little bit more. As Capcom seemed to attempt to make Star Force as big as Battle Network, with toys, manga, and an anime, 
It seems like there was not enough traction to get the ball rolling. There was an enhanced port of the original Bound Network game that released in 2009 in Japan, and added Star Force Mega Man, as well as an original chapter involving him, but the game didn't sell well, which was, as well with the low sales of Star Force 3, a catalyst for cancelling the production for Star Force 4, which would involve the descendant of Lanny Kari. While Star Force only had three games, I feel like the third game in the series ended well enough and makes Star Force unofficially, well, in my opinion, the third Mega Man series in the franchise to end. Like I said before, Mega Man Battle Network is one of my favorite series in the franchise, and while it's not as popular here than it was in Japan, there's still a big group of fans here stateside, making music, art, fan games, and even games replicating the battle system. I even used the music from one of the attempted fan games back in the day for the channel, and while we wait for an announcement for a collection of the games to be released, like with previous Mega Man games, I can see that I love this series, and even though it ended, I hope Capcom keeps bringing it back to life like how they did with the other series in the franchise. And as long as there's viruses out there, we'll be here to bust them.